This is Map Musings. In today's episode, we're going to check out nuclear waste in the USA, the neighborhood from heck for any parcel delivery guy, New Zealand's population density, and landlocked countries around the world. Local maps, regional maps, international maps, nonsensical maps. You're tuned in to Map Musings. I'm the Muser, and these are the maps. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Thank you. All right, what do we got on the docket today? This is a map of the United States with information from the Nuclear Energy Institute. It tells us how many metric tons of nuclear waste is stored in each U.S. state. Apparently, Illinois is the state to send your nuclear waste. There's over 10,000 tons of radioactive goo. It looks like Pennsylvania is second with about 7,500. I'm actually surprised by the amount of nuclear waste in those East Coast states. This maps of the world and it shows us which countries are landlocked, as in countries that don't have access to any of the oceans. Instantly my eye is brought over to Uzbekistan, which is double landlocked, as in it's surrounded by countries that are landlocked already and it itself is landlocked, meaning it is double landlocked. Another big country that is landlocked is Mongolia. In Southeast Asia, we see Laos is completely landlocked, and there are a few countries in Europe and Africa, as well as two in South America. This map of the world shows us the average life expectancy of people in each country. Most of Africa is pretty horrible, but there are a few outliers, like Papua New Guinea, Afghanistan, and Haiti, which all have very low life expectancies outside of Africa. The country with the lowest life expectancy appears to be the Central African Republic, with the average age being less than 52 years old. This map shows us where bald eagles are distributed across the United States. Their breeding areas tend to be north into Canada and parts of the Great Lakes, but in some parts of the country, they can be seen year-round, especially along the Pacific Coast, the Pacific Northwest, and up and into Alaska, as well as areas in the Maritimes and the Northeastern U.S. Overall, they seem to like to be around rivers and waterways, which you can see in the Central U.S., and the blue portion just shows where they're at when they're not breeding. And since you're here, check out this photo I took of two eagles on a tree. Nice. There's a law in Mexico, Article 27, doesn't allow foreigners to own land within 30 miles of the coast, nor 60 miles from the border. This shows you just that. So while you might see a lot of timeshares to own land, you're not really owning the land, you're just having a timeshare in a room in a hotel that you don't actually own, but you're paying the dues and the taxes. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. This Troy, New York in 1881, which had a population of about 56,000 people, which is more than the population it has today, about 50,000. Back then it was a bustling industrial city, right along the Hudson River. And you can see in this panoramic map just how bustling it is. Look at all those ships. Some points of interest are the downtown and this large church up on the hill. You can also see where they blasted the hillsides here with dynamite to allow for these roads and rails to cut right through this hill. Very cool. Who doesn't like panoramic maps? Thanks to the construction of the Erie Canal, Troy was an industrial powerhouse. All the meat and vegetables grown in the Northeast were sent here and shipped down the Hudson River to New York City. Troy was also an important steel city, as well as being home to two Major League Baseball teams throughout its history. Of course, nowadays there's no team, but back then they were known as the Troy Haymakers, and then later the Troy Trojans. If you're a delivery driver, this is the area from heck. Look at all these 60ths on all these different types of roads. You have 60th Avenue, 60th Street, 60th Road, 60th Drive, 60th Place, 60th Lane, 60th Court. Who thought that this was a good idea? So I had to check for myself to see where this was, and it's located in Queens, New York. If you live here, just make sure you're very clear about how you write out your address, because so much could go wrong. 
This might be one of the oldest maps I've shown of the United States. This map is from 1759, and it shows us a very early Pennsylvania. So if we look down here at the Delaware River, we can see where Philadelphia is. And outside of Philadelphia itself, much of the land is pretty open. You do see town names, but as we continue to head further west into the state, it becomes less and less inhabited, with large swaths of the land not really having designated names yet. Just to show how old this map is, well, this map is older than the United States being a country. This obnoxiously pixelated map shows us which coffee chain dominates per state. The west and most of the country is dominated by Starbucks, but out east, it's all about that Dunkin' Donuts, and Minnesota has an outlier with Caribou Coffee. This map shows us the amount of people who are religious in Germany. The black area shows people who do not believe in religion, upwards of 80%. And this portion of Germany, known as Eastern Germany, is the portion of Germany that was run by the Soviet Union. Communism and the Soviet regime really discouraged religion, and there was mass persecution of Christians and others throughout their territory. Western Germany was run by the Allies, the United States, England, and France, where religion was not persecuted. In fact, it was encouraged, and you can see today that a large chunk of Germany is still religious, though in the major city areas you can see that many people are becoming unreligious. Protestant Christians and Catholicism, though, still dominate Germany's landscape. This map shows us just how sparsely populated New Zealand is. The green is showing us an area of the land where not a single person lives within one kilometer of that spot. So the majority of the country, <laughs> nobody's living there. As a matter of fact, 78% of New Zealand's total area is uninhabited. I wonder how many hobbits live in New Zealand. This is simple and to the point. This map shows us which countries have unarmed police and mostly unarmed police. And the only places in the world are New Zealand, Norway, the United Kingdom, Ireland, and Iceland. Ireland has mostly unarmed police. Besides the UK, all these countries have a small population as well. You've heard of the Continental Divide, but have you heard of the other Continental Divides? So, for example, the Great Continental Divide, the main one we all think of, the Red Line, either has water flowing west to the Pacific or east. But then we have the Eastern Divide, which splits water from going east to the Atlantic or west and south to the Gulf of Mexico. Above that is the St. Lawrence Divide, which has water going south or north. Another large one is the Laurentian Divide, which has water either going to the Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River or to the Hudson Bay. So it turns out there's actually several continental divides. And maybe if I'm lucky, you just learned something new. This map is showing us the different types of healthcare systems across the world. But it isn't 100% accurate because even though some of these countries are listed as free universal healthcare, because there's a lot of limitations. Looking specifically at countries like Russia, Poland, China, Iran. But anyways, taking this at face value, there are some countries, one, that have universal but not free healthcare. What does that even mean? Ghana, what are you even doing? Countries that have free but not universal healthcare, which are blue ones. The largest ones here being India, Egypt, South Africa. And then there's countries that have neither free nor universal healthcare, as in you have to buy it to receive it. Again, there's not one that's better than the other because there's a ton of different ways to handle healthcare. And this map's really giving the benefit of the doubt to whatever the country's government says they do, but it doesn't mean they necessarily do it. I mean, come on, do you really expect the universal healthcare in Burkina Faso to be better than what's offered in the United States? I didn't think so. Flawed, but interesting map. Hi, this here is just a small subsection of Scotland, showing us all the different clans throughout the country. Okay, I'll stop that. That is a crazy amount of clans. Sadly, I don't know which century this represents, but I still thought it was cool, so here it is. Real men eat haggis and wear kilts. Okay, now I'll stop. Hopefully I didn't just lose the 1% Scottish audience I have. 
Oh man, we just got ourselves a touchdown of a map here, a real home run. This shows us the birthplace of NBA players by state per 1 million, so it's a per capita map. The map doesn't tell us in what time period this is for, it might be from the beginning of time to now, who knows. But anyways, what you need to know is that the darker the purple it is, the more likely that state is to have a person who will become a professional NBA player. So people from North Carolina or Louisiana have a pretty good chance at being an NBA player. If you're in Alaska or Montana, West Virginia, you know, your chances are slim. But if you did make it, what a goal. All right, let's call it a day there. Thanks for watching Map Musings. I'm the Muser, and those were the maps. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. We also have a Patreon which you can support. In the future, when we get Patreon supporters, they will be shown here. You should totally join. Thanks again for watching, and have a great day. Real men eat haggis and wear kilts.